Hi, I'm Sharona Clements, the art curator at the Peel Art Gallery Museum and Archives, and today we are inside the Art Gallery Vault. This magnificent vault houses thousands of fine artwork, including those by Inuit artists, the indigenous people who have long inhabited Canada's Arctic Circle. Now, within these holdings are 27 dolls that were acquired in recent years. Let me give you a little bit of a background about doll making because I think it's really important to understand some aspect of um, Inuit culture and which also includes doll making. Now doll making in Inuit culture goes back centuries. Dolls were made for and by little girls as a form of initiation into adulthood. It helped young girls learn about the Inuit way of life through the act of mimicry and play but it also gave them an opportunity to learn how to sew an invaluable skill that involved skinning an animal, tanning fur, and then softening, cutting, and sti stitching together all the skins. Now, in the far past, the dolls were made using available and natural material that could be found in the Arctic, like stone or animal bone, skin, and fur. Over time, doll making became a more involved process and the dolls attire came to represent the people and the fashion of the day. As miniature copies of the people themselves, they donned outerwear that resembled the actual wardrobe of the people that they meant to look like. But they also differed from one community to the next. In that way, each doll reflected the distinct style of its community. In the middle of the 20th century, after the Inuit moved away from life on the land and into settlement, the old ways began to disappear. That also impacted the practice of doll making. Dolls were no longer made for personal play, but rather as an art form for economic gain and for an outside market. And when I say outside market, I mean anywhere in the southern area of Canada and also outside of Canada. Normally made by women, these dolls suddenly became sought-after collector's items. They were constructed from a variety of material, including man-made material that was brought from the outside world. Some of these dolls, however, still preserve the essence of traditional doll making. They are shown wearing authentic designs, while others may be wearing clothing that represent a combination of styles. Now, the Pama dolls reflect a rich variety of types and are made by artists from different communities from all across the north. This lovely doll right here in front of me um, was made by an unknown artist. It is called Mother and Child and it was likely made in 1970. We know that it came to us from Joe Haven, which is the Kitikmiat, in the Kitikmiat uh, region of Nunavut. She's about 15 inches tall and she's wearing um, fur, her, her legs actually are made of fur and her boots are made of skin. She's also wearing a beautiful amauti and amauti is a woman's parka and this one actually is a mother's parka because if you look inside of her hood you'll see the infant that she is carrying right behind her. So the female parkas, the mother's parkas, were made with a compartment that was located right behind the hood. So it allowed the mothers to carry their infants up to about maybe the age of two. Even when the kids were starting to walk, they were able to carry them with them as they were working on the land. So the child was never really far. This doll is probably one of my favorite in the collection. She measures about 18 inches in height. This doll was made by artist Kathy Natila of the Kival of Kivalik of the Kiwatan region in Nunavut, which is west of Hudson Bay. She is a beautiful doll, uh, exquisitely made. Her um, head is actually made of leather. And you could see that her facial features, a very beautiful feature, facial features, were stitched on. Her hair is likely synthetic, not real animal hair and she's also wearing fur pants and the amounty, the parka that she's wearing, you can see has detailed beading and some commercial fringes. Now the artist, in order to um, add her name to this beautiful doll, stitched her initials on the back of the amounty in the hood 
And if you come close, you'll be able to see the stitches right on the back. As I said, this is a very beautifully constructed doll. A lot of detail has been put into it, a lot of attention to constructing her um, as perfectly as she appears here. You can see all the beautiful little beading on her legs, on her pants, um, and then the small little uh, boots that were added with the fur fringes. So another example that we have in the collection is actually a male doll. And we know this to be a male doll, first because he's a hunter, he has um, a bow and arrow that is attached to him, but he's also wearing a parka that tends to be, uh, for men, smaller in length. Women's parkas are rather longer, but the male parkas are much shorter. And um, you can also see in this doll, in this male doll, that the facial features were stitched onto him. We also know this doll to be about 15 inches in height. And it was constructed actually by an Unciavit Labrador artist called Emily Flowers. We also believe that this doll is a packing doll. Packing dolls were actually used in the very far past by Inuit uh, people. When they were moving across the land from one area to the next, they found very interesting creative ways to allow the children to help them carry some of their materials. So what the mothers would do is that they would um, stitch into the doll, there's a little compartment hidden underneath the parka where they would stitch inside um, a compartment and inside the compartment there would be loose leaf tea. And so the doll would be given to the child and the child would carry the, the, um, the doll with her across the land. And when they needed to use the tea, they would open up the doll and then they would refill it again once they were moving on the land. Inuit dolls may have once had a practical use, but they have also become beautiful works of art made by highly skilled craftswomen. I hope you enjoyed this segment, and if you did, please let us know, and I'll catch you here next time. <laughs>